Okay, welcome to the virtual college exploration for all Virginia students sponsored by the Virginia Association of Collegiate Registrars and Admissions Counselors and StriveScan. Thank you all for joining us. A few housekeeping announcements before we get started. You can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. Your camera and microphone are off, so the panelists cannot see or hear you. And this is just one of many different sessions that are happening, so be sure to check out the full schedule at strivescan.com forward slash Virginia. This presentation is being recorded and will be available within about a week at the same website, strivescan.com forward slash Virginia. I'd now like to turn it over to our presenters. Awesome, thank you. Awesome, welcome guys. Thanks so much for being with us here today for the Sweet Tea BBQ in Southern Hospitality panel, um, a, a, a candid conversation with five colleges in the South. Uh, my name is Jillian Newton. I am representing Fermi University in Greenville, South Carolina in my second year of admissions counseling. So we'll get started with some introductions. You all will be able to hear a few unique words that make our institutions so special, and then we'll do a little Q&A. So if you have any questions throughout, feel free to put those in the Q&A, and then we'll get those answered at the end. But how about we start with Courtney, then Kendall, Letitia, and then Matt. Hi everyone, my name is Courtney Hostin and I'm representing Rollins College. Um, so I'm one of the assistant directors there and I am in my fourth year of admission counseling. I'm one of the, um, the elder stateswomen to down today's panel. My name is Kendall Hollis. Um, I'm the associate director of admission at Trinity University in San Antonio, Texas. This is my 14th year in admissions and I'm so excited uh, to get a chance to chat with y'all and answer questions. Hi everyone, my name is Leticia. I am an assistant director of admission at Sewanee and I am um, in my sixth year of admissions. Hey y'all, I'm Mac. Uh, I'm also an assistant director of admission at Rhodes College. And I guess I'm the young buck here because this is my second year uh, of being in admission. Awesome. Thanks guys. So we'll, we'll get started with our PowerPoint, start seeing why our schools are so special. We're gonna start with the word St. Jude. Aha, uh -huh. yes, that is me. Um, that is, uh, so uh, one of the great things about Rhodes um, is our access to a lot of different um, internship and research opportunities that are located here in Memphis, Tennessee, where we are located. Um, and one of those opportunities is with St. Jude. Um, in this um, competitive opportunity, this will be something that you can apply for over the summer. Um, should you get uh, access to this, you'll have the opportunity to shadow doctors um, or you can do research um, in their world-renowned facilities um, and have access to kind of that top flight technology um, that uh, St. Jude is, is known for. Um, and of course, you're also working towards, you know, arguably maybe the most estimable goal of, uh, of your life at such a young age, 18, 19, 20, you're trying to eradicate childhood cancer. That is an amazing thing that you have uh, the ability to do. Um, so we're, of course, very proud to be um, associated with St. Jude uh, for those reasons. Um, Additionally, um, I, I think this speaks to kind of the strength of our pre-health program, which I think is probably our strongest academic um, area. Um, the fact that we have access to um, not only St. Jude, but a number of other healthcare providers in the city of Memphis, as well outside of just uh, St. Jude, as well as uh, research opportunities on campus. Um, these really prepare our students for any type of med school, dentistry, vet veterinary, et cetera, kind of healthcare schools they um, are, are planning to go to upon graduation. And so, um, yeah, I think that's that kind of encompasses um, uh, a little bit of our uh, our placement here in a major metropolitan area and the access to things that our students have as a result of that. Great, thanks for starting us off, Mac. Our next mm -hmm. word's gonna be Spark Day. Spark Day is Rollins. Uh, so Spark Day is one of our annual traditions on campus and Spark stands for Service, Passion, Action, Rollins College. You'll never have to say that because it's a little bit of a mouthful, so we just call it Spark Day. Um, but it is a day of service that's built into our welcome week or our first year orientation. We're really big on service learning and being committed to global citizenship and responsible leadership. So we like to set the tone very early. So Spark Day is a day of service where our first year students go out with our faculty and staff members as well as their peer mentors and just spend the day giving back to one of our local community partners. It's a great way for our students to learn a little bit more about the Central Florida area, but it's also a really great way to learn about some of the causes that are really important to Rollins. 
Our hope is that Spark Day will sort of spark the students' interest and they'll decide to pursue other community service opportunities. So oftentimes after Spark Day, we'll see many students who will join organizations that are centered around service, or they'll even go on to take uh, academic courses called community engagement courses, which have some sort of service component built into them, or we'll even see students go on from starting Spark Day to going on to leading immersion trips or alternative breaks where they can travel around the country giving back to community service causes that are very important to them. So like I said, this comes up every year and Spark Day is one of our favorite traditions on campus because it really just sets the tone for the service learning that's built into the rest of the Rollins experience. All right, so this one is for Sewanee. So domain, this is a word that we use to describe our campus. So dramatic, yes, I know, but we, I think, you know, deserve every sense of that. And so our campus itself, it sits on 13,000 acres. So we're a small school, just under 1,700 students, um, but we have enough acreage for every single student to have seven to eight acres to themselves. And so that also makes us the second largest college campus in the entire country in terms of our acreage and our size. Um, so it's really this in, invigorating and really unique environment in which you get to um, go hiking and cave diving and canoeing um, in one of our 13 different lakes that we have on campus. We have a full farm and golf course and equestrian center um, and just so many things for students to do when it comes to the outdoors and so many things for you to get involved in um, beyond, beyond just academics, but so many things to just you know, really enrich your, your campus um, experience. And so that's definitely something that makes this unique. And so we have a very unique word to describe it, um, but the domain just really um, boils down to our campus and the kind of opportunities that you have on Swanee's campus. Thanks, Leticia. And thanks, Courtney, too. Sorry, my mute wasn't working for a second, so I couldn't thank you for that. Um, but the next word is upstate, and that is a Furman word. Um, so South Carolina is certainly known for its beautiful beaches, but we're also known for our, our beautiful mountains and our cooler weather um, to a certain degree in the upstate. Um, so the upstate just refers to being a little bit closer to the mountains. Um, Berman calls Greenville, South Carolina its home and Greenville itself is at the foothills of the Blue Ridge Mountains. Um, we're also located right along the I-85 corridor going from Atlanta, Georgia, passing by Greenville into the Charlotte, North Carolina area, just to give you an image of kind of where we're located. Greenville itself has a population of right around 500,000 and was the fourth fastest growing city in the US as of the last census results. Um, and I think all the other cities in front of us were in Texas. So lots of people moving into Greenville because not only is it an amazing place to live, it's also an amazing place to work and be a college student. Um, we do have 19 Fortune 500 companies that call Greenville home, whether it's headquarters or manufacturing plants, our downtown area continues to receive national recognition for its beauty and the resources that it is offering to our students. Um, as far as I know, we're the only city in the country to have a river and a waterfall that runs through the center of its downtown. From the student perspective, we do a partner with over, we partner with 500 businesses throughout the Greenville area, which is a wonderful benefit for part-time internships throughout the school year. Um, we have uh, some uh, partnerships with Micklin, uh, B, uh, BMW, um, so just a few other places that our students are working with throughout the year and sometimes after they graduate as well. Um, we also have more restaurants per capita than any other city in South Carolina, so our students and visitors and families eat really well. As someone that graduated from Berman, I definitely can speak to this. Um, on their Visiting. We also have a minor league baseball team, an ice hockey team, a large performing arts center, um, several small theaters around the city as well. So for students who are looking for big arts, um, the culture center here is a uh, um, really big as well as our athletic scene, but we're also looking for um, a residential college campus that would find that at Furman. So our students do live on campus for all four years, um, but drive 10 minutes down the road and have a pretty amazing downtown area for disposal. So that is what's happening um, in the upstate for Greenville, South Carolina. Our next word is constructive collisions. That's a Trinity word. Um, so when we talk about constructive collisions, um, we're we're talking about all of those fascinating places where um, where different disciplines, different ideas meet, and that is one of the things Trinity does incredibly well. Um, we have really extensive. Um, research opportunities for students. Um, and that research extends well beyond just the sciences. Um, I know I was an English major uh, in college. And when I thought, when anyone talked to me about doing research, I was envisioning 
like a lab coat and goggles. Um, and so, um, and, and if that's you, I, I also, there are opportunities in the sciences and there are really amazing funded research opportunities, but those are actually available to students um, regardless of their, their area of study. Um, constructive collisions also refers to um, one of our uh, newer buildings on campus is the Center for Science and Innovation. Um, we were ranked number two in the country with Princeton Review for our science facilities. On a uh, national list, we were number eight in the country um, for our science facilities. And when they built our, our new building, um, they built it around the concept of constructive collisions. Um, so that as faculty members and students um, are are walking to their labs instead of being tucked away in their own uh, tiny corner of the university. Um, they were interacting and they were meeting. Uh, they're doing collaborative work, um, and that's again where we're we're finding a lot of opportunities. We did receive for the second time an eight hundred thousand dollar grant from the Mellon Foundation. Um, that what that is solely for students who want to have research opportunities in the arts, humanities, and social sciences. So again, those those spaces and places where things meet um, have been have been really cool on Trinity's campus. We're also one of the few traditional liberal arts colleges um, that has a really extensive pre-professional programs. Um, so we do have a full AACSB School of Business. Um, we have ABET accredited four-year engineering program. Um, we have the oldest computer science program in the state of Texas, um, a communications department and education program. And those are things that you don't always find at really traditional liberal arts colleges. Um, and that, again, allows us to have some more of those constructive collisions, collaborative opportunities. So our faculty members in the School of Business created a minor um, with our faculty members in the music and art programs um, that is specifically for students who want to do museum studies, um, that they want to do arts and nonprofit management. And so they're, they're always coming up with new ideas um, and new ways to engage and new ways to connect students with um, with the material and the content on campus. Um, and that's something that we're, we're really proud of at Trinity. Thanks for sharing, Kendall. Our next word is Fox Day. So that's back to Rollins. So Fox Day is probably my favorite holiday next to Christmas. Um, so it is another one of our famous Rollins tradition and it comes up every spring semester. It's always sometime after spring break and before finals week. And it's a day where our president decides it is just way too pretty outside for us to be having class. Now, I'm sure you're probably wondering, how can you possibly tell it's always beautiful in Florida? So it's a little hard to pick a day, but he finds a day where the weather's just perfect. And at five o'clock in the morning, he pulls out this statue of a fox, sits it in the center of campus and declares it Fox Day. So everything goes crazy. There's air horns going off. People are sending text messages, knocking on doors, announcing that it's Fox Day. So if you had an exam that day, if your project was due, you had a paper due, it doesn't matter, it's Fox Day and everything is canceled. So we start the day off by giving students free breakfast and free t-shirts, everybody's super excited. A lot of students will uh, take the bus out to the beach or spend the day at the Springs. We also are very lucky because we're in Orlando. So a lot of our kids will spend the whole day at Disney or at Universal. And it's great when you get to go on a weekday because then it's not super busy. Um, we also have students who will explore all the restaurants, spend the day shopping. Some of them will travel to other parts of Florida or some students will even just sleep all day because they've really been needing that time as well. And then we finish up the day uh, with a big community picnic where we invite our faculty and staff members back. And we even invite people in our local community because we have a great relationship with the town of Winter Park. Um, so people bring their kids and their dogs and it's just a really fun time. And the best part of it is that uh, you can watch the students try to figure out when Fox Day is gonna be. They oftentimes will play what we call Fox Day roulette, which means maybe they won't do their homework because they're betting that tomorrow is gonna be Fox Day. And 100% of the time they're wrong. Um, so it's a lot of fun. You'll often see students camp out in the center of campus trying to summon the Fox, but we have yet to figure out exactly what day Fox Day is gonna be on. Um, so like I said, it's just a huge tradition and the Winter Park community loves to be involved in our Fox Day traditions. Thanks, Courtney. That sounds like a lot of fun. I would definitely come to that day as well. Our next word is the pledge. All right, so that's a Sewanee word. Um, so it's the Sewanee pledge. And so basically this is um, three guarantees that you would have as a Sewanee student. And so basically we understand that college is such a commitment and you are putting forth all of this effort into your college education and we want to kind of meet you halfway. And so, um, 
our promises to you, the pledge just has three parts. And so our promise to you for one is that you are guaranteed to receive funding to be able to do a summer internship or research opportunity. And so it's really cool because we're located in Suwannee, Tennessee. It's definitely a rural campus environment. And so there are definitely opportunities for research and internship right on campus. But depending on what you wanna do, those opportunities might not be in Suwannee. And so we understand that students a lot of the times use the summers to go and pursue those opportunities, whether they be somewhere else in the country, whether they be in um, bigger metropolitan cities, some students even do a lot of these opportunities abroad. And so it's really nice that even if you find unpaid internships, you can then receive that funding from us. It's guaranteed to you for at least one summer internship or research opportunity. So no matter where you're going, you're able to secure funding for the, from the university to go out and um, pursue these really great academic experiences. And so the second part of the pledge is that we are guaranteeing that a semester long study away program will cost you nothing additional in tuition. And so the idea is that whether you are in Sewanee for the semester or Spain or Germany or anywhere else, um, you are paying the same in terms of your tuition. And then really your only outside costs may be um, travel expenses or other programmatic expenses, but you're also not paying room and board on Sewanee's campus. So a lot of the times your study abroad programs end up being cheaper, if not the same price as your time at Suwannee. So all of your scholarships, all of your financial aid will go towards those study abroad programs. And so it makes it really easy, um, seamless process. Over 50% of our students study abroad, and we have over 200 programs to choose from on all seven continents, even Antarctica. So um, it makes it really cool that you're able to kind of do that so seamlessly. And then the last part of the pledge is that we are guaranteeing if you have one major at Suwannee, you will graduate in four years four consecutive years. And so if for some reason that does not happen, and that is um, on the basis that you are doing your part and keeping your grades up, but if for some reason you do not graduate in four years, you'll get up to an additional year of study on us tuition free. So these are just kind of our promises to you as a Sewanee student and ways to really enrich your um, four years and enrich, and enrich your campus experience while you're at Sewanee. Awesome. Thank you so much, Leticia. The next word is guaranteed access, and that is a Furman word. Um, and that is a part of our Furman advantage. And when I say the Furman advantage, that's our overall promise to our students that they will take part in an unparalleled educational experience. Um, and part of that guaranteed access is guaranteed to high impact experiential learning opportunities. Um, and that will take place throughout their four years that a student has with us on our campus, whether that is a global exploration through a study away, if that's a career investigation through internship opportunities or undergraduate research in areas of their interest to that particular student. Um, over 92% of our students graduated have completed at least one of these experiences and they are guaranteed access to it all um, throughout their time as a student. Um, we really do find value in students having these experiences and and of themselves. Um, and I think there's just such a tremendous value in asking students to complete the process of self-reflection um, to that they're learning how to articulate the lessons they have learned. They're learning how to appreciate the successes and failures. They're acknowledging the skill sets that they've gained and considering whatever their next steps may be too. Um, and these are all helpful tools that our students will continue to use in any career field that they may pursue in the future. Um, we also ask our students to adopt a scaffolding approach when considering these different high impact practices, thinking a little bit more local or smaller in scale for that first research internship or study away experience. And then from there, they can build upon that throughout their four years with us. Um, and this just really ensures that our students are able to make the most of their time with our at Furman and until they engage in that process of self-reflection throughout that time as well. It's also not enough for us to say that we guarantee access without providing obviously the necessary support. Um, so really when I say that support from two standpoints, support from academics, social and emotional, um, support from the community of mentors that students will have, but also the element of financial support. We do provide fellowship funding for students to complete research and internship experiences to ensure that their cost of living is not a concern when they're thinking about these different opportunities um, while they're at Furman. And also, while at Furman, different scholarships and financial aid opportunities transfers away as a student pursues different study away programs. We also provide additional financial assistance to um, offset the cost of living. So just giving all of the support that students really need, all of the resources they need to be successful on campus with their after as well. The next word is Bluff City. Uh -huh. All right, uh, back to Rhodes. So this, um, I mentioned, right, that we are located in, in Memphis, Tennessee. 
Um, and that uh, obviously we, uh, I talked a little bit about some of the access to some research opportunities that that affords us. As well, I do wanna mention that we have access to some great internships as well with the likes of FedEx, AutoZone, International Paper, um, maybe AllSAC, which is the separate fundraising arm of St. Jude, um, as well as a number of different nonprofits if you're more interested in doing something, you know, maybe more boots on the ground uh, kind of work uh, and do an internship during the semester in Memphis. Um, so uh, I did wanna bring that up, but I also wanted to, to bring up uh, uh, Memphis again, because uh, we do encourage students to get out in the city and, and kind of explore and, and find out where their kind of favorite niches are and communities within uh, the city of Memphis. So uh, to do that, we will buy and subsidize tickets to certain events within the city. So maybe that's like a Grizzlies game. Uh, that's our NBA team here. I mean, even though they do have one of the cheapest tickets of any North, North American professional franchise, excuse me, um, we will still occasionally, like if um, the Lakers come to town or maybe the Warriors or some uh, very good team or an important player, uh, when the tickets get a little, to be a little bit um, outside of a student's typical range, we will kind of uh, step in and help students there. Additionally, um, if uh, an, an important or a popular play is coming to the Orpheum, uh, like uh, I guess this was last year, uh, we, we did this for the Book of Mormon, which came through, um, and we uh, afforded tickets um, uh, for affordable prices for our students. Um, so uh, those are, are opportunities that we do encourage our students uh, to, to get involved with um, uh, based on uh, our, our own kind of involvement. But additionally, if you want to kind of uh, go to one of the many different uh, museums here, whether, whether it's the National Civil Rights Museum, which is an excellent place to, uh, to learn about, a lot about our country's history, whether it is um, Stax um, or Sun Studios, if you want to learn a lot about um, the music history that um, has really shaped this city and also just the United States and, and popular culture as it is today. Um, whether it is maybe a concert as a result of that kind of uh, um, integral music history that we have here in Memphis. Uh, we do get a lot of different concerts that will come through, um, as well as comedians who will come through uh, as well, if you're interested in that. So there are a lot of things that you can do uh, as a result of, of being here uh, in Memphis. And, and, and I do want to also say, I mean, I'm a little biased because I'm born and bred uh, from the city, so I do love it here. Um, but I do feel like this city has a, a decent amount of positive momentum behind it. Um, and uh, is a popular place for, for young people to be. So uh, whether it is, you know, a night out on Beale Street or you want to go to uh, maybe one of our, uh, a number of our great restaurants uh, here um, as well. I know that the name of this uh, is Barbecue. Memphis is a, a somewhat known for, for its barbecue. I'm um, trying to downplay it a little bit so I don't start any uh, arguments here, but um, there are a lot of great ways to, to interact uh, with the city of Memphis uh, should you choose to come to Memphis. Great, thanks, Mac, for sharing. Um, and sorry, Kendall, I don't know why the other word wasn't on this slide, but if you wanted to share your last word with the students, um, I think it was probably on a mission was the other one. Thank you. Sorry, I was I was like, what? <laughs> What's going on? Um, so yeah, so when I when we talk about being on a mission, um, Trinity students um, are very, very passionate. Um, and, and that's one thing that I've always that I always enjoy and respect um, about the, the students on campus. Um, uh, part of Trinity's mission statement uh, as an institution is about inclusive excellence. Um, and we really, really strive uh, to, to be a welcoming and open place to students, regardless of your um, socioeconomic background, regardless of your beliefs, regardless of, um, of what your goal is, we, we want to support you on that mission that you are on. Um, our students complete more than 120,000 hours of service each year. Um, over 80% of our student body will be actively involved in community service before they graduate. Um, we, our largest student club on campus is a community service organization, and there are new ways for students to engage that are happening um, every year. Um, I, I appreciate Mac refraining from some of those fighting words about, uh, about barbecue. Um, and and I, I really enjoyed um, the fact that all of my colleagues have shared a little bit about their location. Um, and, and I'll do the same. San Antonio is the seventh largest city in the United States. Um, we're less than 10 minutes away from the center of downtown. We are considered an urban campus. We're part of the city's inner loop, the urban core of the city. Um, and with that, um, with that incredible privilege of opportunity for our students also comes an incredible responsibility. And our students feel that the way they engage um, uh, with service oriented activities and programming, the way they take positions in city leadership, they serve on advisory councils um, with the city is, is really impressive. Um, and it's because our students do care um, deeply. As an institution, 
we, um, we put a lot of um, resources into supporting students on the, on the things that they're passionate about. I mentioned a little bit about research earlier, um, but we also fund students who are developing clubs and organizations and wanting to take leadership roles. Um, similar to many of my colleagues have mentioned, we, we fund students for internship opportunities. If the organization you want to work for is not able to pay for pay you, um, we have funds set aside so we can make that opportunity um, accessible to you as a student. We think that's really important. We don't charge an application fee for anyone who wants to apply. Um, we, we accept self-reported test scores. Um, our Pell eligible students, are, we were 20% Pell um, with this incoming first year class. So again, our, our mission to, to create access for students and then to support them on the mission and the things that they are passionate and driven about uh, once they're on campus are something that are really core uh, to, to your Trinity experience. Thanks so much, Kendall, for sharing. And thank you, everyone, for sharing. I hope students that you able were able to get a little more insight into what all of our institutions are offering. I wish I could go to all of these institutions because they sound so wonderful. But with that, we'll get started with our Q&A. Um, I guess we'll get started first. And we can start with Courtney, perhaps, just saying, well, how your um, institution has reacted to COVID. Are students allowed on campus or people in classes? So we'll start with Courtney, um, then maybe Leticia, Kendall, and then Mac, and then I'll go last. Sure. Um, so it's certainly been an interesting year at Rollins. We are in hybrid mode in every sense of the word. Um, so we did allow students to have the option to stay home. Um, we also do have a fairly large international student population. So for some of our students, um, that decision was made for them. Um, so about a quarter of our total population decided to stay home, but we do have many of our students who are living on campus right now. Um, our students who are on campus are in single occupancy dorms. Um, they are they seem to be doing well so far. I check in with them um, as often as I can. Um, we also did allow our faculty members to request to stay home if they needed to. So you could have a student who is on campus currently and taking most of their classes in person, but um, one or two of their classes virtually. Um, also, I do always like to add the note, right? Everybody had to get very creative this year in terms of um, how we are doing things. And one of my favorite things that we came up with is something that's called the blue and gold apron, which is inspired by those like meal delivery kits, like HelloFresh or Blue Apron, things like that. Um, and so now students can actually use their meal swipes to request a box be delivered to their apartments on campus. And you can either get the ingredients or the pre-prepared food. Also faculty and staff members can use it. So I use it when I don't want to grocery shop. Um, but it's been a really creative and fun way to still allow students to have a good experience, have some good food, but also try to de-densify some of our larger eating spaces. Um, so I think we reacted pretty well. Like I said, I check in with the students and they, they seem to be adjusting as best as they can. Yeah, here at Sewanee, we are, um working similar to um, what Courtney said about Rollins. So basically we gave students the option as well, whether they wanted to be on campus or learn remotely. And we have over 90% of our students on campus. Um, there was a little less than 5% of our domestic students who chose to stay home. And then of course, there's some international students who have not been able to get to campus, um, but we've also had some students joining us in the past few weeks. So that's exciting. Um, but, but yeah, so students are on campus. Students were tested for COVID um, upon getting back to campus and you needed to have a negative test in order to get into your dorm room. So our dorm setup is pretty similar to what it has been in past years. Um, we have been reserving our Suwannee Inn for students who need to be by themselves or quarantine for any reason. So that's a nice place for, for them to kind of, I guess, be held up um, in a room by themselves. And um, really things have been going well. I think our small campus size and then our location are working to our advantage right now. We have hashtag protect the bubble. And so just many different ways that students um, can be mindful and um, we have a limit on events and things like that. But students that are on campus, most of the classes will also be on campus. But um, just as Courtney mentioned, there are some courses that are being taught remotely either by the um, request of the professor or to accommodate students who are not on campus and need that remote learning as well. So you definitely could be on campus and have some remote courses, but if you're on campus, you definitely have a lot of classes that are going to be on in person as well. Um, 
and then we've just been being creative with um, student organizations, events on campus, um, like our cycling classes get moved outside whenever they can. And um, we have food trucks that set up to, again, um, encourage students because at Sewanee, we have one central dining hall. Um, and so we encourage students to get food elsewhere and they're able to use their meal swipes at restaurants and things like that. So it's just been being creative, but um, for the most part, things have been going well on campus. So I'll jump in. Very similar responses as students were tested prior to move in. About half of the, we're, we're at about half occupancy. Um, we, we did prioritize students. Um, and so we, uh, for, for move in um, for the fall semester. So we invited our first year students, um, our international students, and our um, students whose home learning environment would not be conducive, they would not be set up to be successful, um, were the students that we prioritized for, for move-in. And then everyone else um, could apply for um, available spaces. Our, our residence halls are always, um, um, they're all suite styles. So we don't have any community bathrooms. Um, so it's typically two students per room, four students per bathroom. Um, and as a result of, of everything going on, uh, we reduced that pretty significantly. So it's one student per room. Everyone was in a single. Um, I think that sounds similar to what Rollins uh, did. Um, we, we shortened our semester. Um, so we, we had move in a little bit earlier. Our students arrived in early August and then we, um, are concluding in-person instruction. About 45% about of our classes um, are, uh, are hybrid. So every course had the option um, with, it, with the rare exception, we had 3% of our classes that were in-person only. Um, and that was just due to the content of the course. Uh, but, um, but the vast majority were um, hybrid or online options. Um, so, um, so yeah, kind of, kind of working through each, each challenge. Um, but yeah, we're, we're closing the residence halls uh, right before Thanksgiving. We're doing a full week of Thanksgiving break, which is new for, for everyone. And then uh, we'll have online only um, a final exams um, the first week of December. Um, and then we are, with the guidance of local health officials, um, we are intending to expand opportunities for students to be on campus in the spring. Um, and we've been surveying students and reaching out to them. So hopefully we'll be able um, to bring back, particularly in, in the next list, uh, prioritizing graduating seniors. Um, so for their last semester um, that they could be in person. Yeah, so uh, we've got a little bit different of a situation um, than the first three that uh, were brought up here, uh, as we are completely remote this semester, except for special circumstances such as Kendall was talking about with um, international students and, and students who, who um, again, have that kind of um, uh, designated, demonstrated need uh, of having that kind of um, structural backbone that uh, we can provide, right? Um, otherwise, though, our students are um, off campus. Um, I think that most of our students were prepared for um, that announcement that we made in July, um, but some, of course, were, were upset, and I think understandably so, right? Um, but we made that decision based on uh, the information that we had at the time and some projections that we were uh, getting from, uh, and I hate to be a dead horse here, but actually from St. Jude, um, and so we wanted to make sure that we were keeping our students as safe as possible, and we felt like we made a decision that, that did that. Now, with all that having been said, we are, I mean, of course, we've given ourselves about four or five extra months to kind of make a plan for this upcoming semester, um, and we uh, as much as I have heard from our senior leadership, from our dean and from our president, uh, we are fairly committed to coming back next semester. Uh, we are, again are going to prioritize um, uh, first year students and uh, as well seniors. Um, so I don't think that is uh, uh, unique to us, but we do wanna make sure that those two uh, groups of students get that um, uh, very uh, special experience that, that, you, that you get in, in your first and your final uh, semesters uh, on campus. So uh, we are working towards that. We do have a relationship um, uh, with Baptist Memorial Hospital, which is a large healthcare provider here, and they um, are uh, setting us up with, um, uh, with testing. They also uh, have helped us um, designate areas on campus where should a student um, contract the virus, they can go into these designated quarantine uh, uh, houses or um, uh, residence halls, et cetera, uh, where they can uh, you know, uh, continue to, to get their education online, but also do so in a, in a safe way. Outside of uh, first years and, and uh, seniors, there will be, uh, you know, uh, limited spots available for our, our juniors um, and sophomores. Um, so we're still kind of uh, 
getting our information and we sent out a survey to all of our students, um, which I believe is due um, very soon. So we're still kind of compiling information on how we're going to, to do that. But um, uh, any of our other kind of um, COVID policies that we have um, uh, in place for this next semester, if you're super interested, you can check it out on our website. It is quite vast. <laughs> so uh, if you look at it and it feels a little daunting, that's okay. I don't blame you if you end up not reading it. But uh, there is a, a lot of information, of course, because this is very challenging, unique um, time. Um, and so, um, yeah, so that's that's our plan. Not right now, planning for it next semester, in short. Thanks, Mac. And lastly, at Furman, uh, we have about 90% of our students on campus right now and about 10% are working um, from their homes kind of remote learning. Um, but we had a phased approach to so our freshmen and our seniors moved in in mid-August and then our sophomores and our juniors moved in about a month afterwards just to see what campus would be like um, with only half of the campus. But students are going to class. Um, it's really based on how comfortable the professor is teaching with class. So some students might have all four of their classes in person. Usually about students are going to have half and half, two of their classes online and then two of them are in person. But like everyone else mentioned, we have quarantine sections for students, uh, random testing like one every day actually for students, just making sure that students are staying safe. Because um, even though, you know, we are on campus, we still want students to obviously not get coronavirus. So making sure that students are staying safe and that's what's going on on Furman's campus. Um, one student asked um, what is going on with the test optional feature for each school. So just for a show of hands, if anyone um, wants to raise their hand, who is test optional uh, for this year? All right, who is test optional for scholarship opportunities? Okay, thanks guys. All right, the next uh, question that a student asked, um, are students allowed to bring cars to campus? So how about we start with Mac, we'll do Leticia, Kendall, and then Courtney, and I'll go last again. <laughs> uh, so at Rhodes, yes, you may all four years bring a car to campus. That might be helpful. Um, the area that we're in is a little bit walkable in Midtown Memphis, but to get from Midtown to Downtown or Midtown to East Memphis, it's really helpful to have a car. You don't necessarily need to have one. We do have zip cars on campus. Of course, you can also use Uber and Lyft if you have access to that. Um, but in short, yes, you are allowed to have a car on campus all four years at Rhodes. Yeah, at Sewanee, you are also able to have your car all four years. When you're on campus, you don't necessarily need it. In fact, our campus is pretty much only walkable, so you can't necessarily drive from your dorm room to your classes or anything like that. But it comes in handy if you want to visit um, surrounding cities like Nashville or Chattanooga, or if you need to go to the grocery store or you know other things like that. But when you're on campus, most students either walk or bike around, but you can have a car. Absolutely allowed to have a car all four years. About 65% of our students will, will have a car on campus. Um, there are more parking spots than people who request parking permits. Um, as so um, definitely very accessible. At the same time, you really don't need one. And I always hate wa like wading into that argument with families um, <laughs> where a student's like, I can't live without it. And their parents are like, mm-mm. Um, so we do have three bus stops on campus. Um, it, uh, we're in a great area of town that is, there's restaurants and shopping and things that are all within walking distance of campus. Um, but like Mac was saying, it can be convenient, particularly when you're looking at um, uh, like an off-campus internship that is in a less accessible area on public transportation and um, not necessarily less accessible but like inconvenient you'd be on the bus for a while whereas you could take a direct route with your, your own vehicle so um, and yeah same thing for Rollins actually this year is our very first year letting first year students have uh, cars on campus um, I was actually surprised that I still have a parking spot but turns out there's enough room for all of us um, so students can have their cars very similar thing you don't necessarily need a car at Rollins because um, our town is pretty walkable and then getting to downtown we also have the sun rail train that'll take you there um, but same thing having a car can certainly be convenient and if you don't have a car I bet you'll find a friend who does have a car so that's also convenient Awesome. Thanks, guys. And lastly, at Furman, uh, you can have a car car for all four years, but like everyone else mentioned, you really don't need one. Um, you can actually walk to downtown Greenville from our campus off of our Furman Lake. We have what's called a Swamp Rabbit Trail, but also free shuttles and a big Furman trolley that drives students to and from campus for free. So really easy to get around. Um, and someone asked about favorite traditions on campus. So it looks like we have five minutes of everyone just wants to name and we can go in any order this time. Um, if someone just wants to name a favorite tradition that they have on campus for their that their students really enjoy. Uh, 
I'll jump in. Um, sorry. I, our, uh, so the, we have a tower on campus and it's our logo and you see it everywhere. Um, and it's the second highest point in San Antonio and you climb it twice. So you climb it once uh, as a first year, so you can begin with the end in mind, and then you climb it a second time as a graduating senior. Um, and it's the kind of, you get to sign a brick on the inside. So it's kind of cool. I'm happy to go next. So um, one really interesting tradition that we have is the Suwannee Angel. So we are an Episcopal institution. Um, we don't require that our students take religion courses or attend religious services. And we definitely have students of all faiths and beliefs. Um, but one really cool tradition that we have is the Suwannee Angel. And I think all of our students enjoy it. So when you enter in and out of Suwannee, you pass through the Suwannee gates. And so the idea is that Suwannee is such a magical and beautiful place that the angels hang out there. And so um, these angels also protect you. So when you're in Suwannee, you do not need your Suwannee angel because you are just protected by the place that Suwannee is. But when you are leaving Suwannee and passing through those gates, students tap the roof of their cars, and that is to pick up your Suwannee angel to then be with you while you are out in the world. And then when you arrive back to Suwannee, you tap the roof of your car again to let your angel go to be free because you don't need your angel when you are in um, um, when you're on campus. So that's just a really cool, interesting tradition. You'll always see students tapping the roof of their car when they enter in and out of Sewanee. That's so sweet. I love that. I'll go next. Um, so Furman has 13, uh, 13 fountains on campus. So one tradition we have is on the last day of classes, all the seniors will get in their bathing suits, old t-shirts, shorts, um, and they'll jump in the fountains, bring floaties. Um, there's a lot of free food and free towels and free Furman swag that you get on that day. So it's a special day that you get to see from your freshman year. And then finally, on that very last day of class, you get it as a senior. A lot of seniors will skip classes, probably shouldn't do that, but just the last day to do some fun. So that's my favorite one. Yeah, so um, at Rhodes, we have something called Rites of Spring at the, uh, in the spring semester. And this is when our, um, our student activities board um, brings in either a pretty famous or maybe two up and coming artists for our, um, uh, our students to uh, enjoy on uh, a Friday and a Saturday. Um, so this year we were gonna get Black, Six Lack to come through. I was pretty surprised. I was like, wow, he's, he's famous. He's, he's actually, he's famous. Um, but it can also be, uh, like I said, maybe some, some more up and coming acts. So, um, yeah, and I think that's something that our students are always looking forward to, whether it is, you know, first semester, second, uh, second semester, et cetera. I already gave my favorite Rollins tradition, which is Fox Day. So just to reiterate, Fox Day is awesome. It's the best holiday ever. Um, and it is by far my favorite Rollins tradition, hands down. Great. Thanks everyone for sharing and just coming today and speaking with the students. And thank you students for joining us today. We only have two minutes left, so I don't think we'll have time um, for all of us to answer any more questions, but please go and visit our websites, all of our virtual options as well. Um, and thank you. You guys have a great rest of your week. Awesome. Thank you all so much. I feel like I have to say y'all after that presentation. That was great. <laughs> Um, cool. Well, thank you all so much for joining us. Um, when you all close this window, there will be a quick link to a very quick four question survey and we would appreciate any feedback you can provide. Um, this is, again, just one of many sessions being held uh, over this last week of remaining uh, panels that we'll be hosting. So be sure to sign up for more at strivescan.com forward slash Virginia. In about a week, you will be able to find this session's recording as well as all of the other sessions recording at strivescan.com forward slash Virginia. Thank you all so much for coming. Have a great day.